What if I told you you can make an extra 500, maybe even an extra thousand dollars every single month with just these three items? How do you say? Obviously with a poop scooping business. My name is Tony and this is Poop Scoops for Noobs, where I share my successes and experiences on owning a pet waste removal service. In this video, I'm going to share step by step everything that I did when I first started my poop scooping business. Make sure you watch till the end of the video so you know everything you need to successfully start your pet waste removal business. The beauty of having a pet waste removal service is that literally anyone can do it. Whether you're a poor college student that needs extra money for the weekend, or a single parent that has a crap ton of student loans, or someone who's retired who wants to do something extra on the side, starting a pet waste removal service is a cost-effective and relatively easy business that you can start on your own. The first step to this process, I'm going to call it step zero, and that is to commit. Think about what you're getting yourself into. It's a poop scooping business, it's nothing glamorous. However, the most important part that you need to remember is what are your true norths? What are the reasons why you want to start your own business? Are you trying to save up extra money to buy a house or to pay down your student loans? Or are you just trying to do this on the side because you have a lot of free time? The why is so important especially once you start telling people that you're doing a poop scooping business because you're going to get a lot of funny looks maybe some judgment and that's okay people will always judge and hate especially when you are reminding them of all of their unfulfilled potential so commit with eyes wide open and start your business now step one is to form a legal entity i had no idea how to start my own business so what did i do i just went to google and i typed in how to start a business in utah make sure you review all of the resources your state has regarding starting a business pretty much the process was i had to fill out a couple of forms with some identifying information Part of forming a legal entity is coming up with a name. I recommend going on Google and typing in poop scooping businesses in your state and looking at the different types of businesses and their naming conventions. You'll want to make sure that any name you come up with has the word scoop or waste removal in it so it's easier for your customers to identify what kind of services you provide. My naming convention is something simple, just your first or last name and the word scoops. I was also able to use a virtual notary to make sure all the paperwork was legalized. The most important part of this process is making sure that you use a separate address for your business address. A lot of people make the mistake of using their home address for their business and that is not a good idea. If you think you receive a lot of junk mail right now, imagine once your address is in public domain and accessible to anyone, all of the marketing material and other businesses that want to do businesses with you start reaching out to you. The way I got through this requirement is going back on Google and looking for virtual address services. A virtual address is an address you get to register located in whatever location that provider has you're able to receive post mail and packages to that location they'll save all of your mail for you and will contact you whenever you receive something for example I use a service called iPostal one I have a virtual address that's located at a Staples nearby my town they also have a pretty cool portal that I can access and see whatever mail I have currently stored there when I was going through the paperwork I made sure to submit my business as a DBA or doing business as when you register as a DBA the state you're doing business in will recognize your business as a sole proprietorship that means you can legally conduct businesses in that state but you will also be responsible for all of the debt and obligations that your business might incur I did not create an LLC and I do not recommend you do so but you will need to consult with a professional for that opinion step two is to go to your local credit union or bank and open a business account with them this will be extremely important as it will allow you to separate your personal expenses from your business expenses you'll need to use your virtual address to open up your business account having separate expenses will be really important once tax season comes around once once you open your business account, deposit some money, get yourself a business debit card, and start buying your equipment. All you'll need is a bucket, a poop scooping, shovel, and a couple of plastic bags. Every time you buy equipment for your poop scooping business, make sure you save the receipts so you can claim them as business expenses next year on your taxes. Once you have your business account set up, step three is to go online and look for any payment providers. A lot of my customers that I've worked with have paid me through either Venmo or Cash App or Zelle. You can also 
consider using Square to automate your payments with your customers, but that'll require a monthly fee. At this time, I would recommend creating a Gmail account for your business so you can register your business email with all of these payment providers. Step four is to do research in your state and your local municipality and see if there are any special permits that you'll need to handle waste removal. Every state is different, so make sure you cross your T's and dot your I's so you don't incur any unnecessary fines. Step five is an optional step, but I think it's one of the most important, and it's investing in business insurance. Do you really need business insurance for your poop scooping business when you first start? Probably not, but it's better to be safe than sorry. What would you do if one of your client's dogs accidentally escaped the yard or accidentally attacked you? Or if you had an accident and you tripped over some of their lawn ornaments and broke a piece of their property? Without having business insurance, you would be responsible for all of those expenses, plus any potential legal fees. So even though this step is optional, it's best to do it sooner rather than later so you can protect all of your assets and your business. Step six in creating your own poop scooping business is to use that business email that you created and create a Facebook business page. This is what I did when I first started my business as it was a low cost of entry for me to get out to as many people as possible without having to build my own website. I also recommend getting yourself a Google number so you have a business phone number so people can get in contact with you. That way you'll be able to send text messages, speak with your customers without giving them your personal phone number. Having a Facebook business page for my poop scooping business was really helpful for me in the beginning. I was able to share my posts to all my friends as well as post to local dog groups in my state. Just make sure that you follow the rules for each group so you don't get kicked out for unnecessary spam or self-promotion. Step seven would be to create your own logo for your business and make your own post on your Facebook business page. There are many free tools online that'll allow you to create your own business logo or you can use something like Photoshop. If you are not the creative type, I would recommend using a website like Placeit. They have a pretty user-friendly interface that allows you to create a bunch of different logos and designs using their platform. When making your first post, you'll want to make sure that you're showing off the types of services that you're providing. I happen to find a gif of this dog who is scooping up his own dog poop and I thought that was really funny and I decided to use it as my first post. You can also consider staging a scene where you work with one of your friends who has a dog and then you record yourself scooping up their dog poop. Don't overthink this step. Just post something, try to be creative, and see where it'll take you. Be clear and concise on your post, describing the types of service that you are providing, and make sure there is a call to action to message you for more information. The final step of starting your own poop scooping business is to advertise. Like I mentioned in the previous step, you can start posting on your Facebook and advertising to your friends and family, and having them share your services across their friends. You can also consider creating flyers or posters and going to your local pet stores, talking to them about leaving some of your business information for their customers. This will definitely cut into your expenses, but the worst that they can say is no, and you'll be back at the same step you were at already. What I personally did was leverage the Facebook platform and use their Facebook ad functionality. This allowed me to target all of my Facebook posts to people on the Facebook platform that had similar interests. I tried to target specifically dog owners or people that like dog related Facebook pages. Have you ever thought about starting a pet waste removal business that can be netting you an extra 500, even an extra $1,000 a month? By the end of this video, I will explain all of the startup equipment I used when I began my pet waste removal business with as little as $60, as well as two items that I bought that made my scooping appointment significantly easier. All of the equipment that I'm going to suggest will be in the video description below so you can start your pet waste removal business today. This guide will make two assumptions. One, that you have a smartphone so you can manage your scooping appointments, and two, you have a means of transportation. You will need a vehicle to travel from one of your client's properties to the next. A truck or a minivan is not required. I actually have a mid-size SUV where I can store all of the pet waste that I pick up in the back of my trunk. If you have a smaller vehicle or you don't want to haul the waste inside your car, you may want to consider adding a hitch to the back of your car so you can attach a trailer to it. Adding a hitch to your car will significantly increase your startup cost for a pet waste removal service, but this will allow you to separate all of 
your cleaning supplies and your waste removal outside of your car. The first item you will need for your pet waste removal business is a self-contained vessel that will store all of the pet waste that you pick up. I started with a two gallon plastic bucket with a handle. This allowed me to walk around the yards of my clients to pick up whatever waste I found. The bigger the bucket, the more expensive it's going to be. However, this will help you save time during your scooping appointments because you won't need to change plastic bags as often. After a few months using the bucket, I upgraded to a debris dustpan with a handle. This allowed me to save even more time during my scooping appointments as I didn't have to walk around the yard and then walk back to the bucket to deposit any of the waste. With my dustpan, I was able to just scoop it up and continue along the yard. A decent sized plastic bucket will cost around $10 to $20, while a debris dustpan will cost a little bit more, closer to $30. As of the time of this video, there's a sale on a debris dustpan for $17. Next, you will also need a means of scooping the waste off the ground. If you're going the bucket route, you will want to grab yourself a metal pooper scooper. I went through a variety of scoopers, from plastic scoopers to that metal giant claw that looks like it came from the movie Toy Story. I actually first started with a plastic scooper and I found that it was horrible when it came to scooping up dog poop in really dry environments. The poop would get stuck on the grass and it would take multiple attempts before you can scoop the poop into your container. You will want to have a plastic scooper eventually eventually as it was very helpful whenever I needed to scoop up poop on concrete. With the dustpan route, all you need is a rake that will allow you to scrape up the poop from the ground. I found a really great pooper scooper with a rake, a spade, and a tray for about $21 on Amazon. The next two items on the list will be part of your reoccurring expenses. You're going to need 13 gallon plastic bags so you can put inside of your bucket or your dustpan. This will allow you to safely discard any of the pet waste you collect during your appointment. As a best practice, I typically collect all of the poop in one plastic bag, and then when I'm done with my appointment, I rebag that in a second bag. That way, it'll allow me to take care of any of my pet waste without making a mess on my client's property or in my car. This may also be a requirement at your local municipality, so please make sure you review any requirements that your state may have when it comes to discarding pet waste. Depending on how many plastic bags you buy at once, it'll cost you between $10 to $15. You will also need to invest in a bottle of bleach so you can sanitize your equipment. It will be extremely important to keep your equipment clean as you do not want to accidentally get any of your client's pets sick because of cross-contamination. There are two methods I've seen pet waste removal businesses use to sanitize their equipment. You can mix the bleach and water in a spray bottle and spray down your equipment in between scoops. With disinfectant wipes and paper towels, you'll wipe down your equipment for your next appointment. The second option is to have a large plastic container so you can store a bunch of water and bleach. At the end of the appointment, you can soak all of your equipment in that plastic container and then wipe down all of the excess poop. This is a great suggestion for anyone with a truck or a van or someone who wants to add a trailer to the back of their car. You can find a bottle of bleach on Amazon for about $16. These four items were my starter kit when I started my pet waste removal business, but I definitely ended up buying more equipment while I slowly loved up my business. Once you've completed a couple appointments, you may want to consider the following items to level up your scooping. First, you'll want to invest in some rubber gloves and some rubber boots. After a couple appointments, you'll quickly realize how often clients don't really take care of their yards, and it can get really mucky and disgusting when you're walking around there. You also want to make sure that you're not stepping in any poop with the shoes that you walk inside your house. I found a three pack of rubber gloves for $7, and you'll find that rubber boots will cost between $15 to $30, depending on the quality and the size. Next, you'll want to buy something that'll protect your face and eyes from the sun. While a baseball cap can work fine, I actually prefer a wider brim straw hat. From personal experience, I found that the straw hat helps sweat drip off the hat and not on my face. You would be surprised, but I do not recommend sunglasses. When you're poop scooping, you'll find that sometimes some of the poop pebbles will be hidden because of weird shadowing of the grass. And when you're wearing sunglasses, it'll be harder to see those poos on the ground. The one that I use myself cost me around $21. The next item is something you'll definitely want to upgrade if you live in a desert environment or during the hot summer days. In these type of environments, I 100% recommend investing in a water backpack. There were times during this year where I had three to four scooping appointments and outside was at least 100 degrees. Using a water backpack, I was able to handle the very hot conditions while scooping outside and keep myself hydrated during the entire appointment. You can also use the water backpack to store any extra plastic 
plastic bags or doggy treats in case a dog escapes. The water backpack that I used cost me around $30. These last two items are things I had never expected, but they significantly improved the quality of life for my poop scooping appointments. I'm at the point of my journey where I can have up to seven appointments for one afternoon. It's starting to get dark earlier, so I invested in an LED headlamp. This will allow me to continue with my scooping appointments even if it gets dark, instead of having to reschedule the appointment for a different day. This will also help you save money because you will drive less and save on gas. A pack of two LED headlamps cost me around $12. I will also highly encourage you to invest in some really good bug spray. Surprise, surprise, when you're scooping, there's actually a lot of bugs and flies and mosquitoes all around you. I can't tell you how many days I come back with at least five or six mosquito bites on my legs and my arms. You can find some really good bug spray for around $12 on Amazon. As a recap, my pet waste removal business starter kit cost me around $62, while leveling up my equipment has cost me around $180. So you've been sending out quotes for your poop scooping business and you finally got the message you were hoping for. You're so excited until it hits you. Now what? In this video, I'm going to go over everything you should expect on your first appointment as a pet waste removal business. Failing to plan is planning to fail, so I always like to set expectations with my clients before I go over for their scooping appointment. I always reach out to the client the day before the appointment to confirm the time and to verify their address. I also like to let them know that I'm going to text them before I'm on my way. That way, the client will have an opportunity to lock any doggy doors and make sure their dogs are not in the yard. The next day, you're probably going to be filled with a bunch of nervous energy and a little bit of anxiety, and that's okay. It's the first time you're going to meet this client and you want to make a great first impression. So make sure you're not scrambling during your appointment time and put all of your equipment in the back of your car the morning of. It'll be one less thing for you to stress about and you can focus on providing the type of experience you want your clients to have. Plan to arrive at least 10 minutes early for a good first impression. Just think about appointments that you've had in the past with either a service provider or a landscaper. They tell you something about being at your house between 8 to 5 and now you're expected to be around all day waiting for them to show up. I make sure to underpromise and over -deliver. Deliver. I give them their appointment time and then I show up a little bit early. I've had many positive reviews specifically because of being on time, so that's something you want to keep in mind. Once you're ready to go, make sure you text the client that you're on the way. This will give your client enough time for them to put the dogs away and for you to scoop safely. A lot will be going through your mind while you're driving to your appointment. It's completely normal to be a little nervous, but this is an exciting opportunity for you. Once you get to their address, just take a moment to look in the mirror and smile. Take a deep breath and acknowledge that you are about to do your first appointment and that you are a real business owner. How many businesses haven't been able to get one client and now you have one? And if you can do it once, you can do it twice, and you can do it thrice. And that's how you grow your business. Text the client that you're outside and make sure you start prepping your equipment. Put a plastic bag over your bucket or your dustpan and make sure you put your boots on. Boots are extremely important, especially when it's your first time exploring a yard as you're not going to know where any of the poop is. Now is the time to greet your customer. This is where you let your personality shine and you try to provide them the type of experience you want your clients to have. Same hi with a big smile and asking them about their day goes a long way for their customer satisfaction. They will typically lead you to the yard or give you instructions on how to get there. Consider asking the client if there are any specific places in the yard that they want you to focus on. Some dogs like pooping in a specific area or along the fence and this information will help you find them in a more efficient manner. Let the client know that you'll text them when you're done. If they ask you if they should pay now or later from a customer experience point of view, I always said later. That will give them an opportunity to see your work ethic exploring the yard and a higher likelihood that they will tip you after doing a great job. Before I go over what you should do while you scoop, make sure you skadoosh the like button so we can share this message with as many people as possible, that they too can scoop their way to financial freedom. Now, the moment of truth. Let's get to scooping. Find one corner of the yard and start walking towards the opposite side. While you're walking, you'll want to make sure that your eyesight is directly in front of your feet. You should also fan your head left and right so you have a wider range of view. Keep walking until you find a poop pebble to scoop up or you reach the edge of the yard. Walk along the edge of the yard for a couple of steps, turn, and walk to the opposite side of the yard. You'll do this over and over until you complete the entire yard. Make sure you thoroughly check the part of the yard that's against the fence. I found a lot of poop pebbles would tend to get stuck there. If this is your first time scooping the yard, more likely than not you'll have to use more than one bag. When your bag is full, make a mental note of where you are in the yard and walk back to your car. When putting your waste away, remember to double bag the bag per your state requirements and to help have a more sanitary environment and to minimize the smell. Put a new plastic bag over your bucket or your dustpan and go back to where you left off. Once you fully explore the yard, what I like to do is do the exact same thing going the opposite way. At the end of the day, you're running a business and I'd rather 
have quality service instead of focusing on getting things done as fast as possible. This will also help because many times poop pebbles will be hidden because of weird shadowing in the grass and walking through the grass from a different perspective will help you find them. Many clients have told me that they stopped working with previous poop scooping businesses because they don't do a thorough enough job. You're not expected to grab every single poop pebble but if you put in a little effort it'll go a long way in the eyes of your client. Using this strategy and depending on the size of the yard and how many dogs we've had and how long it's been since their last cleaning, you should expect that the first scooping appointment should take between 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Text your client that you're all done with the appointment and make sure you don't leave any equipment in their yard. Your client will pay you for your services and hopefully they gave you a small tip. At this time, I'll make sure to ask them if they want to continue with any weekly or monthly scooping appointments. You'll make a lot of money doing one-time cleaning appointments, but the real money is once you start having a bunch of weekly customers that you service. What is the value of your time? Time is the most indispensable resource that we have available to us. We all deserve infinitely more than what we'll get, but a capitalist society has deemed us at fair market value or how much we're worth per hour. No one will ever pay you your fair share, but in this video I'm going to share my thoughts on how much you should charge for your poop scooping business and ways that you can maximize your potential. If you want to better understand how many customers you need to have 500, even an extra thousand dollars a month with your pet waste removal business, make sure you watch till the end of the video. In order to better understand how much we should charge for our poop scooping services, we need to first understand how much we will be spending to maintain our business. At the end of the day, we're growing a business and we need to make sure that we're spending less than we're making. The biggest expense I see is the time invested traveling to your clients and the amount of gas that you put in your vehicle. You'll want to identify which towns and counties your services will be available. Whether it's an extra 10, 15, or 20 minutes, you'll want to understand how far you'll be willing to drive to service your clients. You'll need to keep this in mind whenever you give them a quote. Personally, I have a radius of around 30 miles. There are days where it'll take me 25 to 30 minutes to drive to a client's house, but once you start growing more customers in that area, it allows you to travel to that territory and service different homes all on the same route. This will help you save on gas and even more important, time. You'll have more time to service more customers or to grow your business in other ways. The second expense is your reoccurring expenses like your plastic bags and your bleach to clean your supplies and any poop scooping equipment that you previously bought. I will recommend buying your plastic bags and your bleach in bulk so it'll drive down the cost of your supplies. The last expense you'll need to keep in mind is your advertising expense. Whether it's flyers or business cards that you want to give out at a dog park or spending money on Facebook and Google ad campaigns, it's important to understand how much of your monthly budget you will spend on advertising so you can continue to grow your business. Now I'm not saying it's a requirement to spend a lot of money on your advertisement strategy, but the more people that know about your services, the more likely someone will hire you for your services. For example, I spent around $200 on Facebook ad campaigns last year during the winter season and I made over a thousand dollars that month with how many people were reaching out to me to find out more information. Only you can determine how much you want to spend on your advertising, but a healthy rule is between 10 to 20 percent of how much you've made the last month. So if you make a hundred dollars one month, you should spend around 10 to 20 dollars the next month trying to grow your business. Now that we identified our expenses, it's time to do our market research. Whether you like it or not, there's a fair market expectation when it comes to poop scooping services. I can charge at five hundred dollars per scoop, but the likelihood of someone asking for my services will be really low. Do not get me wrong, this is not a race to the bottom. I am not asking you to undercut your competitors, unless that's the strategy you want to implement. As long as your rates are in the same ballpark as your competitors, you'll have an easier time convincing a new client to hire you for your services. I actually found that my rates are a little bit higher than some of the businesses around here, but personally, I try to provide a quality service that warrants the price. Don't chase the money. Chase the quality and experience you want your clients to have and the money will follow. This is also another reason why I choose not to have a pricing chart on my page. I do not want to give my competitors any information on how much I charge for my services and there are a variety of factors that you want to consider so it's very difficult to have a cookie cutter answer for a poop scooping service. To be honest, I've had maybe a handful of customers who complained about not having a pricing chart but if they're complaining about something that small, they're probably going to hassle me on the price and I don't want to do services with them. Don't waste your time trying to convince someone on why they need your poop scooping services. Invest your time in the people that are actively looking for that type of service. You finally landed a customer. What are some things you want to keep in mind? I like to ask three basic questions so I can give them the best accurate quote. How many dogs do you have? 
What town are you located in? And has it been more than one month since your last cleaning? A majority of the time, your clients will be really embarrassed at the current state of their yard. Sometimes you'll have a client that tells you the truth, but a lot of the times they'll just lie and say that they've cleaned it a couple weeks ago when it's been a couple of months ago. You may also consider asking for a picture of their yard or asking how big their yard is. You may find that a small yard with one dog takes you around 25 minutes compared to a large yard with three dogs that takes you an hour and a half. Because of this discrepancy, I highly suggest that you implement an initial cleanup fee. When it's the first time you're visiting a yard, expect that there's going to be a lot more poop than you anticipate and it's going to take you longer to clean up. Expect that the initial cleaning will take around 45 minutes to an hour and a half. So you'll want to calculate how long it'll take you to get to your client's house and back and how long it'll take you to do their scooping appointment. For your initial cleaning fee, you'll want to charge between $35 to $65 for one dog, $45 to $75 for two dogs, and $55 to $85 for three dogs. Remember that this is your business and you can charge for the type of service that you want to provide. After identifying how much your initial cleaning will be, it's time to map out your weekly services. Your weekly cleanings is where the real money is at. Since you only have a week's worth of poo to pick up, it should take you between 15 to 30 minutes to complete, depending on the size of the yard. Remember to value your time and energy, even though it's a week's worth of poo. Because of that, you can find weekly rates for one dog between $12 to $16, two dogs for $15 to $25, and three dogs to $20 to $30. The winter season is probably the best time for this business. Many clients don't want to deal with the cold in the snow so they let their dogs poo outside and it just builds up for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Once springtime rolls around everything starts to thaw and melt and they have a bunch of poo in their yard. Because of this you can definitely charge a winter cleanup fee between $80 to $150 depending on the size of their yard. I've had a few winter cleanups last year that took me at least three to four hours and it was important that I got paid for that amount of time. Personally I enjoy scooping in the cold because all of the poo pebbles are hard and stiff and they don't tend to smell as badly. You also also have the option to provide additional services along with your scooping cleanup. There are some pet waste removal businesses that charge their clients extra to take the poo away with them. You may consider charging an extra $5 for every two plastic bags of poo that you pick up and haul away. Personally with my clients, I take the poo with me so I can dispose of it. It's pretty gross letting a bag of poo marinate in your client's garbage can. This allows me to charge a little bit extra for my scooping cleanup because this is just an additional service I provide. Another strategy you can implement is offering offering a pet friendly deodorizer and disinfectant that you can spray in their yard so your clients don't have to smell or worry about dog related parasites. With that type of service you can add an additional $5 to $15 to your scooping cleanups. This is your business and you can offer whatever kind of service you want for dog owners. Pet sitting or dog walking is another area that you can grow into. I've only focused on poop scooping so far but there are a lot of opportunities to grow your business. Just be wary of paralysis by analysis. If you give too many options to a client, sometimes they will feel overwhelmed and won't make any decision. It's just better to give them as few options as possible so it's easier for them to say yes. Using this information, I created a calculator to illustrate how easy it is to make $500 to $1,000 using your poop scooping business. Using the baseline weekly prices of $15, $20, and $25, it'll take you between 5 to 8 clients on a weekly basis to start making around $500 extra dollars and 10 to 16 clients to make an extra $1,000 a month. Once you start including some initial cleanup fees or winter service fees, you'll see the amount of money you can make with your poop scooping business grow significantly. The cool thing about this calculator is you can change any of the yellow fields and it'll calculate the grand total of the week so you can calculate your pricing structure for your poop scooping business. If you want a copy of this calculator, make sure you leave a comment below. As we are maximizing the value of your time, you can expect a poop scooping business will net you between $35 to $65 an hour. And what is the best way to maximize how much you're making per hour? By strategically advertising and marketing your pet waste removal business. So you decided to take a plunge and be a small business owner. If you're anything like me, you're feeling overwhelmed and confused on how you're supposed to grow this business. With this video, you're going to have a concrete plan on how you can expand your pet waste removal business and maximize as much money as you can make. Using these strategies, I'm on track to make $10,000 in my first year of poop scooping. Whether you're doing pet waste removal as a side hustle or you want to eventually grow this to a full-time business, make sure you watch till the end of the video so you can learn from my mistakes and make as much money as possible. In order to effectively market and advertise your pet waste removal services, we first need to identify your avatar. Now I'm not referring to those blue aliens that are one with nature, or that elemental warrior with a blue arrow on his head, but your avatar, your target audience. In business and marketing, an avatar is a little backstory you create that helps you understand who your ideal customers are so you can more easily find them. Consider it a detailed profile of your perfect customer so you can identify who you are selling your services to. I bet your default answer was dog owners,
owners, but avatars can go so much deeper than that. Try brainstorming what other activities dog owners participate in, or other kinds of services that they might need for their dogs. Dog owners may frequent their favorite pet store, like Petco or PetSmart, or your local pet store, so they can buy food and toys for their dogs. If their dog is having behavioral issues, they may go to a dog trainer. If their dog is sick or needs medicine, they may seek out veterinary services or a clinic. Or if they want to rescue a dog, they may go to their local humane society or an animal shelter. This is just some of the services dog owners can look into, but you can flesh out your avatar even deeper. What are some locations that you may find more dogs than usual? A dog park is the first thing that pops in my head, but when you start to think about it, there are a variety of areas where dogs tend to be. If an owner wants to get their dog more exercise, they may take them to a public park or trail. They may live in trailer parks, or their apartment is part of a homeowners association, or an HOA. With all of these services and locations, there's only one thing you need to remember. They are all managed and owned by one person or entity, and you will need to speak with this individual so you can tell them about your poop scooping services and potentially hire you on. Let me know in the comments below what your ideal avatar would be. Now that we've identified your avatar, the next step to expanding and growing your pet waste removal business is by bringing awareness of your services. You will be surprised to find out how many people don't know poop scooping is a service they can hire to make their lives a little easier. Awareness should be your primary goal to grow your business. As more people know you exist, the higher the likelihood someone will reach out to hire you. Regardless of how you plan on bringing awareness to your business, this will take up either time or money, sometimes both. We will split awareness strategies between two buckets, traditional and digital campaigns. Traditional campaigns involve sending marketing materials to people via traditional methods, like printed media on newspapers or on flyers and business cards you create. You may consider creating flyers or business cards that you can hand out at a vet clinic or animal shelter so they can pass to their customers. Whatever kind of printed media you create, remember to specify several things, the name of your business, what kind of service you provide, and the best method to contact you. Please remember to always have on you something you can provide to a prospective client who is looking for more information. I've had several instances where I am scooping at a client's house and one of their neighbors sees me and asks me what I'm doing. After I tell them about my services, sometimes they'll ask me for a business card or the best way to get in contact with me. Don't lose a potential customer just because they don't have a way to contact you. Another traditional method is having yard signs you can add on someone's property. Yard signs are an interesting strategy as it will give you the possibility to bring awareness to your business as long as there are a lot of traffic, whether people walking by or cars driving. Most people won't let someone just randomly put a yard sign on their lawn, so you may consider starting some sort of customer loyalty program. You can offer your clients a free or discounted scooping appointment if they add your yard sign to their lawn. This would allow you to gain more visibility as well as reward your customers for helping out. Customers love to help out, especially when you provide them excellent service. There have been many times where after I do two appointments with a customer, I ask them for a review on my Facebook page. And if they would consider supporting a local business, I'll do their next scooping appointment for free. Almost every single time, my customer left me a review and they still offered to pay me because of the excellent service I was providing them. Always focus on the customer experience and doing the best job that you can. Your happy clients will recommend you to their friends and leave you positive reviews. And the more reviews you have, the more visibility you have for a new client. Now that we got traditional campaigns out of the way, it's time to talk about digital campaigns. Digital campaigns involve sending marketing material to people via digital methods, like social media or websites. When you're first starting out, you can consider using classified websites like KSL or Craigslist. Classified sites are really useful as they're free to use, and as long as you're posting in the correct section like pets or pet services, you shouldn't have a problem. Just note that this website may be a little spammy, and you may get a bunch of emails from random people just trying to waste your time. Your post may also get flagged for spam, but because it was free, all it costed was your time invested. Since classified sites can be hit or miss, some businesses decide to build their own websites. However, not everyone has coding skills to build a website or enough money to hire a freelancer to build them a really good website. Even though I have a programming background, I did not feel comfortable enough to build my own website. So what did I do? I created a Facebook business page. My Facebook business page is one of the biggest contributors to the success and growth of my pet waste removal business. With a Facebook business page, you can leverage the tools on the platform to expand your professional network. You can first start with your friends and family and see if anyone would be interested in hiring you or sharing your business page with their network. If you can't find someone to hire you, find a friend with a dog and ask them if you can do a scooping appointment for free, just for the sake of taking before and after photos or videos. Humans are visual creatures, and having before and after comparisons of your service will help drive the value you offer to your clients. 
Once you have a before and after picture on your business page, you can next leverage the different animal and service Facebook groups available in the towns you plan to service. Most of these groups will require you to sign up and request permission to join, and will also have rules on when you are allowed to advertise your services. Make sure you follow these rules and don't spam your business on these groups to avoid getting kicked out or banned. The most powerful tool you could leverage for your Facebook business page is using the Facebook Ads feature. Remember the avatar we created in the beginning of the video? Facebook ads allow you to create a targeted audience based on keywords or interests and they will only send your advertisements to these kinds of people. With my avatar, I identified the different kinds of interests for dog owners like pet stores, pet services, dog magazines, and created a targeted audience. I then scheduled an ad campaign of my before after photo and selected my target audience so my ads will only be shown to people who are most likely to have a dog. Although using Facebook ads is a pay to play system, it expanded awareness of my pet waste removal business as fast as I was willing to spend. Even if you spend $100 on a campaign and only get one new client, remember to consider the lifetime value of your customer. That one client may want your weekly service, and after a few weeks or months that pass by, you would have recouped the money you spent on the initial ad and then have more funds to spend on more ads and repeat the process. Think about the last time you went to get fast food at a place you've never tried and they completely messed up your order. Your burger was missing and they put ice in your drink when you specifically said no ice. Even though you were still hungry and ate the food, at the end you thought, I'm never going to go there again. That's what I call a horrible customer experience and it's the one tool you can focus on to differentiate why your business and services are better than your competitors. By the end of this video, I will be sharing my best practices that I've learned in my 12 years of customer service to give your clients an optimal customer experience and maximize the potential of your pet waste removal business. We first need to identify what customer experience means and why it's important as you continue your journey as an entrepreneur. The customer experience is the impact and perception a customer will have over the course of every interaction with your organization. Every moment a customer has a touch point or interaction with your business is an opportunity for you to wow them and hopefully inspire loyalty to your brand. A loyal customer is a happy customer and how customers feel about your brand can benefit you in several ways. It can boost how long a customer retains your services for or the customer lifetime value. A loyal customer will be more likely to recommend your services to friends and family. It will impact your brand's reputation in having high quality service, and it can give your business a competitive advantage over other companies in your town and state. First impressions are everything, and the customer experience starts the moment they land on your page or see one of your advertisement posts. Do you have a clear and defined value proposition of the type of service you provide or what your business is about? Your value proposition is the promise you're making to your customers as a business, and it's the reason why they should pay for your services. As the attention spans of people continue to get shorter and shorter, it's important that your value proposition is clear and concise so any potential customer will know exactly what you offer in as short of time as possible. Do you have before and after pictures and videos showing the benefits of your pet waste removal services? As poop scooping is a business not a lot of people would know about, it's important to have that visual representation of your service to quickly drive the value you bring to your customers. Your posts and advertisements should have a call to action that you encourage your potential customer to do, whether it's to message you or share your post to someone they know. This call to action is the necessary step to get your customer invested in your services and potentially pay you for those services. Even though we are running a business, behind every dollar is a person. Part of the customer experience you want to focus on is personalizing that experience to give your customer that human touch. Whenever someone reaches out to you, I make it a habit to acknowledge that client by their name. Our name is a core part of our identity, and when someone acknowledges you by name, you naturally pay more attention and are invested in what they are saying because they see you. Basic compassion and manners will truly go a long way when it comes to running a business. When you show appreciation and thanks to your customers, you are acknowledging that they may have busy lives and that you aren't trying to waste their time. Putting these two ideas in practice, make a habit of saying the following sentence when a customer first reaches out to you. Hi, whatever their name is, thank you for reaching out. You can then go through your normal script of probing questions to provide the best accurate quote, like the number of dogs they have, what town they live in, and how long it's been since the last cleaning. Once your customer mm. replies, show appreciation and follow up with, thank you for this information, I really appreciate it. Once you provided the quote and your customer agreed, it's important to set expectations and be proactive with your communications. Tell your customer exactly what to anticipate, the date and time you will be servicing them. Assume your client has a busy schedule and letting them know when to expect you will make their lives at least 1% easier. 
easier. You should also let the customer know that you will text them or call them when you are on the way. This is especially important in our line of work as you do not want to be scooping poop and have a dog start barking at you or worse accidentally bite you. You should also discuss your method of payment so there is no confusion the day of service. In my experience, a customer will typically ask this first before you head over but it's important to set this expectation as you want to get paid for your service. Once the day of the appointment arrives, remember the expectations you've made with the specific client. Proactively let the customer know 30 minutes to an hour in advance that you will be on the way. This will give your customer ample time to get ready and put their dogs away. When you're done with the scooping appointment, it's time to get paid. This is your chance to let the customer know they've gone through the whole yard and made sure you scooped everything you could find. This will further reinforce why they are paying you for your services, especially if you make the payment process as easy as possible. You can always accept cold hard cash as well as utilizing payment providers like Venmo, Cash App, and Zelle with a quick scan of your QR code on the app. If you decide on using a paid service like Square, you can automate these payments at whatever cadence you agree with your customer, and you'll just be a reoccurring charge on their monthly statement like the coffee shop or Netflix and Hulu. If your customer decides on setting up a weekly or bi-weekly scooping, make sure you set up the next date of service as soon as possible. Since I have the Facebook business page, I utilize the appointment calendar to set up my scooping appointments. This allows me to finish my scoops, and as soon as I receive payment, I head back to my Facebook business app and set up the next appointment. You can also set your Facebook business app to automatically send your client a reminder the day before your scooping appointment. This goes back to our focus on the customer experience and maintaining proactive communication as long as it does not diminish the quality of your service. These concepts may be simple, but think back to a time when you had a rude cashier or agent on the phone and they made you feel some type of way. Why do you think Amazon's mission statement says that they aim to be the Earth's most customer-centric company? Because of their obsession of the customer experience, they made everything in the world available to you with just their one-click buy functionality and set the standard of what to expect from any business. Now, I'm not saying you will become the Amazon of poop scooping, even though that would both be equally interesting and terrifying. When you focus on the customer experience your business provides to all of your clients, it will lead you to more success and you could potentially be one of the best pet waste removal businesses in your town and state. If I told you that you can start your own business with just a rake, bucket, and plastic bags and start making an extra $500 to $1,000 a month, what would you do? Whether you don't want to feel chained to a desk anymore or want to have financial freedom as you work for yourself, starting a pet waste removal business is a low cost and rewarding opportunity that you can start on your own. By the end of this video, you will learn the top five tips I wish I knew when I started my poop scooping business so you can learn from my mistakes and minimize the headaches that will come in this line of work. My first tip for you is to watch your step. This might be an obvious, but you'll want to keep your eyes on the ground as much as possible. Not only because you don't want to step on some poo, and trust me, that's going to happen eventually. You also don't want to trip over any lawn ornaments or step in a hole and sprain your ankle. Especially when it's the first time going to a client's house, you should take the extra time to be mindful of your steps so you do a quality scoop and protect yourself in the long run. I've had many different kinds of clients in this line of work. Sometimes you'll have a client who has completely disregarded their yard and it's like a jungle. Watch your step because you'll never know what you can fall into. Tip number two is to remember to keep track of your miles. I will admit this is probably one of the biggest blunders I made with my pet waste removal business this year. Unfortunately, I was not mindful enough to keep track of any miles accumulated during my scooping appointments throughout the year. Since you are using your vehicle to transport you to your appointments, you can track your miles to claim them on your taxes for business expenses. This includes keeping track of your gas receipts as this would also be considered business expenses. Don't leave any unnecessary money on the table and lower your tax liability by accurately tracking your miles and business expenses. I plan on implementing a new system for my business to help me take care of these issues, but more on that later in the video. The third tip I have for you when starting a pet waste removal business is to always have on you extra supplies. That includes rakes and plastic bags. You never know when something will happen with your equipment during your appointments. In the middle of filming for this video, the rake that I owned since the very beginning snapped mid-appointment. Old Faithful did her last scoop. I went back in my car and saw the scooper claws and flat scooper wasn't going to be enough for the snow and ice I'm currently dealing with, so I had to complete that appointment with half a rake. Then I had to go to a local pet store to get myself a new one. Save yourself headaches and have more than one rake at all times. I invested in several GT3070 cultivator rakes that have been great in all grass, snow, and ice. It also has an adjustable neck that can be as long as you need it to be, so save yourself from unneeded back pain. The cultivator is not ideal for gravel, so you will need a metal rake for those kinds of scooping jobs. 
you can get yourself a cultivator rake on Amazon for around $21. Link in the description. While we're on the subject of rakes, tip number four is to be mindful with how you are scooping the waste with your rake. You'll want to flick the poo into the bucket or dustpan using the corner of the rake. This technique is especially important during the winter months or when it's raining, as if you try to scrape the waste into your dustpan, it will most likely fall apart and make your job significantly messier. Just use the momentum of the rake and your arm to fling any poo on your rake into your dustpan, and then tap the rake into the dustpan a few times to allow any excess waste to fall into the plastic bag. Now, pay attention as this next tip is probably the most important. Do research in the cities you plan to service and see what your competitors are offering. You should not worry if there are other companies offering pet waste removal services in your area as that would be a sign of how healthy the market is. What you should focus on is identifying how much of your competitors are offering their services for, how often they offer scooping appointments, and how they funnel and engage potential customers to acquire their services. Do they have a dedicated website with a sign-in form or a Facebook business page? What is their presence on social media? This research is important because it allows allows you to understand the quality of service of your competitors so you can differentiate the customer experience your clients have when working with you. When you're brand new, the best way to compete in your area is to just provide the best kind of customer service you're capable of. Whether that's being proactive with your communication or signing up for your services is a painless process. A better customer experience and quality service will lead to happier clients, which justifies having higher prices than other companies in your area. Value your time accordingly. This is your business and if a customer thinks your prices are too high, then move on to the next one. Do your research correctly and justify your prices with having an exceptional customer experience. Since you got this far into the video, I'm going to leave you with a bonus power tip. Automate your payments and try to get your customer's credit cards on file as soon as possible. I got to a point with my pet waste removal business where I manually handled Venmo payments and scheduling for 20 plus clients per week. This was a very time consuming process for me as I'd only charge my clients after service was completed and oftentimes I'd have to chase a client down a few days later to remind them to make their Venmo payment. This led to a lot of unnecessary stress and worry about not getting paid and having to remember which client I needed to chase down. Down. The longer you wait to automate your payment process, the more of a headache it will be when you transition over your customers to a new system because you will grow to a point where doing anything manually will not allow you to scale and grow your business efficiently. Remember the new system I mentioned earlier in the video? I implemented Jobber as my CRM or Customer Relationship Management tool to help take my pet waste removal business to the next level. Utilizing Jobber, I now have a sign up form I can route potential customers to so they can fill out all the necessary information I need to give them an accurate quote for their scoops. This data is then saved on the Jobber platform as a request and then I can send that customer a customized quote for that service. If the customer accepts the quote, Jobber automatically turns it into a job that's scheduled for whatever date that was decided. Once the job is complete, I can automatically send a professional looking invoice to my customer so they can pay via an online portal. Jobber has a GPS tracking tool I plan to use so I can measure how far I'm driving during my appointments. It has features to log all of my business expenses, like my gas receipts and plastic bags. I can also set up my invoice system to require all customers to prepay their invoice before I service them. This is going to be the most impactful change to my pet waste removal business as I will not need to chase down any customer for their payment, and if I utilize their auto payment feature, any customer who signs up will automatically be charged at the first of the month. This will save me time so I can grow my business even more and focus on what really matters, being the best pet waste removal business I can be. I highly suggest trying out Jobber, and if you're ready to take your business to the next level, click the Jobber link in the description or comment below so you can save 30% off on your first three months. Whether you're running your pet waste removal business or you're thinking about starting this line of work as a side hustle, one of the most important areas to pay attention to is how much money you spend to operate your business. Having a general idea of what expenses you may have in this business will empower you to charge the appropriate rates for your services and eventually scale your business to make even more money. By the end of this video, you will learn the top six categories of expenses for your pet waste removal business so you can best prepare as an entrepreneur and succeed with your business. A quick side note, I recommend saving receipts of everything you spend for your pet waste removal business, including all of the items listed on this video. I cannot give financial or tax advice, but you may be able to claim most if not all of these items on your taxes as business expenses to lower your tax liability. Please consult with a tax professional to learn what options are available to you. The first main expense that comes to mind with a pet waste removal business is all the gas you spend driving to your clients houses. Since our line of work requires us to travel between locations, be prepared to fill up your tank of gas at least one time per week depending on the kind of vehicle you drive and the gas mileage it has. This is very important to keep in mind, especially 
especially when you provide quotes to new customers because you want to ensure that whatever rate you specify will include the cost of driving to and from their house. If someone is outside your general area of service, do you really want to add an additional 20 to 30 minutes of commute time to your route if you're not getting paid appropriately for that time and gas? Price yourself correctly and you will not worry as much on how much gas it takes to complete an appointment. The second category of expenses for your pooper scooper business are the supplies needed to perform your services. When starting out, you will need a rake, preferably metal or aluminum, a container to hold the waste like a bucket or dustpan, your plastic bags, I buy 13 gallon bags to put in my dustpan and then double bag them in large black trash bags, and bleach to sanitize your equipment in between appointments. You are going to buy a lot of plastic bags and bleach, trust me. Along with your plastic bags and bleach, other reoccurring expenses you'll have are paper towels to wipe and clean your equipment, plastic booties for your shoes to prevent bacteria from being transferred from one location to another, rubber or plastic plastic gloves to keep your hands clean during your appointments, and any other product you use to stay clean and sanitary. Poop scooping is a messy business, and you want all of the supplies available to keep yourself healthy and ensure you don't bring any germs back home to your family and pets. Since you'll be utilizing your vehicle all the time for your pet waste removal business, vehicle maintenance will be considered the third expense you can expect in this line of work. Because of how much driving you'll do, you will need to keep up on any maintenance checkups and regular oil changes to keep your vehicle running as smooth as possible. This also includes tire rotations and replacements with all the wear and tear your vehicle will go through. You may also consider investing in roadside assistance programs if you do not have the equipment to change a flat tire by yourself because you will experience a flat tire eventually. Be extra diligent with maintaining your vehicle, especially if you do not have the means to borrow or replace that vehicle if anything else were to happen. You should make it a business goal to eventually buy a truck or secondary vehicle only for your poop scooping business as that would be considered a depreciating asset for your business come tax season. Having a separate vehicle will help you better track your business miles and gas usage and keep your personal vehicle cleaner for your own use. Owning a truck for my pet waste removal business is one of my business goals for 2022 that I'm most excited for. Outside of gas, the money you spend on marketing and advertising will probably be one of the biggest expenses you have for your business. Both Facebook and Google ads are a pay-to-play system where you have to pay the platform some money for them to actively promote your ads to a specific audience. As a general rule of thumb, I like to spend at least 10 to 20% of the revenue I made in the last month as my budget for paid advertisements, but this will change depending on the demand for scooping services. For example, this time of the year is the most lucrative for pet waste removal businesses since the snow is starting to melt and dog owners don't want to deal with an entire winter's worth of thawing poop on their lawn. Along with paid ads, you may also consider investing in business cards so you have a way to promote your business to anyone who comes up to you during the middle of your scoop or in conversation. Other marketing materials may include flyers and door hangers if you're looking to do more guerrilla marketing in a specific town, and lawn signs you can stick on the ground at some of your clients' houses. Don't be afraid to invest in marketing material as this is just one of the ways you will expand the potential reach of your pet waste removal business. The next expense you want to keep in mind is any seasonal clothing you will be purchasing to keep you comfortable regardless of the weather. During the winter season, you will want to buy some warm hats and thermals for your body and legs, as well as water-resistant gloves and boots for all the snow. For the summertime, I also bought myself a large brim straw hat to protect my bald head from the sun. Whatever you decide, remember this is something you'll be wearing for longer periods of time when you scoop, so make sure it's comfortable and doesn't get in your way. Now, the expense I'm going to talk about will typically creep up on you the longer you operate your business. Eventually, you will get to a point where it makes sense to start investing in software or licenses for apps and platforms that help you automate many of your business processes. It's true what they say, the more money you make with a business, the more expensive it is to manage that business. For almost a year, I only used my Facebook business page and received payments via Venmo or cash. I decided to invest in technologies for my pet waste removal business to take care of a lot of the administrative and invoicing work that was taking too much of my time. You may grow to a size where you want to pay for a subscription to a routing app so you can best determine the routes you take for your scoops each day, or pay for QuickBooks so you have a paper trail of all of the invoices and transactions made with your business. I decided to invest in the CRM Jobber to help me keep track of my schedule, create automated 
automated invoices when I complete my scoops and have customers sign up for auto payments so I don't have to chase anyone down for my money. I also bought a subscription to Nice Job so my customers can receive an automated message to leave me a review and get my website built to convert even more potential clients to my business. Both of these platforms cost me a monthly fee, but the additional work I've been landing since the beginning of the year has already paid off the subscription costs. You can check out Jobber or Nice Job via the link below and save yourself some money when signing up through that link. I highly recommend it if you want to take your business to the next level. Since you got this far into the video, I'm going to leave you with a bonus tip you're probably not really thinking of. Using a payment provider like Venmo, Square, or Jobber, they all take a small percentage of the transaction as a fee to process any payments. These fees may be small, but at scale it can get to hundreds of dollars a year that you spend utilizing their platform to manage payments. Some of these platforms will have different tiers that you can sign up for, which all have different fees and rates depending on how much you spend on a monthly basis or the amount of transactions you're doing. On the Connect plan I'm using with Jobber, their fee is 2.9% plus 30 cents of the transaction. So this means a $20 transaction will have around 88 cents in transaction fees Jobber will automatically take to process that transaction. Personally, this is a small price I'm willing to pay for all of the automation and features I've been able to utilize on Jobber for my pet waste removal business, and I'll happily give give my money to a company or provider if they can make my life a little easier. Speaking of making your life easier, don't forget to save a portion of your business income into a savings account that is hard to access so you have money available to pay for your taxes as well as hire someone to do your taxes. Depending on if you have a business set up as a DBA or doing business as or an LLC, these company structures will have different requirements on how you're expected to follow your taxes. Even though tools like TurboTax are great for most things, if you do not feel comfortable filing your taxes as a business, hiring a CPA or certified public accountant to do your taxes can be one of the best investments you make for your pet waste removal business. Please note, CPAs are not cheap, at least the good ones, but they'll be able to provide additional strategies you probably haven't thought of to save you even more money with the business. Since CPAs and taxes can get really pricey, you need to keep in mind which times of the year are the best times to maximize how much money you can make with this kind of business. One of those times is starting to happen right now, the spring rush where every dog owner has a winter's worth of poop falling in their yard. It's very common for pet waste removal business to make close to 30 to 50% of their annual income during the spring rush because of how much demand there is for our services. The spring rush can be very taxing on your mind and your body, even though the money can be extremely lucrative. The spring rush is the most exciting time for a pet waste removal business. Between the end of February to the end of April, you'll have a good six to eight weeks of heavy workload and a lot of new customers reaching out for your services. You'll find that many of the customers who reach out for a winter cleanup or spring cleaning also did not do a fall cleaning to pick up the leaves in their yard. Because of this, you'll find many yards that have poop, leaves, and twigs all mixed together which will make your job significantly harder. You can also imagine how soggy, packed down, and mushy these poops are after weeks or months of snow and rain falling on them. Since these are the conditions you should anticipate when performing a spring cleaning as a pet waste removal business, do not be afraid to charge extra for your services during this time period. I implemented a new change in how much I charge for these types of scoops, but more on that later in this video. Springtime is for growth, so make sure you have everything ready to best succeed with your business. With the influx of customers, you will need additional time to send out quotes, follow up on any potential customer requests, send out new invoices, while also managing your currently weekly maintenance customers. With all the extra work you will run into, there are many things to keep in mind that you'll want to try and automate within your business and personal life. Try to have your home in order to the best of your abilities. Make sure you have your schedule cleared of any obligations that does not benefit your business during these two months. This is a personal choice, but try not to host or schedule any parties or get-togethers with friends and family if you don't have to. Sometimes sacrifices are necessary and within reason, but be very picky with the use of your time. You can work as much or as little as you want. This is your business, so do what makes you happy and pushes you forward to your goals. You should work with your partner and family to ensure house duties are delegated appropriately to the rest of the household. You should not be responsible for all of the laundry, cooking, cleaning, etc. If you have a significant other or children that can lend a hand during the busiest time for your business. You will not have the same amount of time as you usually do, especially if you're being serious about growing this business. If you can afford to delegate some of your duties like answering emails, returning calls, or sending quotes and invoices, take the opportunity to do so. If you cannot, set expectations to your customers via your voicemail and your auto messages and tell them how many days or weeks in advance your book
booked out so they know how long it'll be until you can service them. Meal prep when you have the time so you have food ready for the rest of the week, or maybe consider having your groceries and supplies delivered to your house instead of you going out to the store to buy them. You'll want to have a lot of snacks in your car with you, anything like trail mix that has both carbohydrates and proteins to keep your body moving throughout the day, and make sure you drink plenty of water to stay hydrated because you will work up a sweat with how much poop you'll be scooping. Speaking of supplies, you'll want to stock up on everything you need, extra buckets, rakes, plastic bags, and cleaning products you think you might need over the next few weeks. Have everything handy so you don't have to stress about going to the store at the last minute in between all of your scooping appointments. Ease of mind will be one of the main themes throughout this video because the less time needed to worry about stuff, the more time you'll have to be out on the field scooping and acquiring more business. With all of the time you'll be scooping, remember to take care of your body as much as possible. During the spring rush, you will feel extremely sore and tired because of how much physical work you'll be doing. In the coming weeks, I plan on scheduling several massages to help me keep my body as good as it can be. Something that I'm starting to experience for the first time as a pooper scooper is trigger finger on my scooping hand. There are times where my ring finger is very tight or feels locked and doesn't open at the same speed as my other fingers. This is something that happens when you overuse your hands gripping for long periods of time and the only way to take care of it is to rest your hand. It's definitely worse in the mornings when my hands haven't moved for a couple of hours. I'm going to implement some stretch exercises in my daily routine to ensure my hands are strong as they can be. You should also consider filling up a container with hot water and putting Epsom salt in the water to soak your hands and feet. The magnesium in the Epsom salt gets absorbed into your body and may provide relief for muscle cramps, inflammation, and soreness. Whoo, that's hot. If you didn't know about this Epsom salt tip, make sure you skadoosh the like button on this video or I'm going to keep burning my hands off until you do. Now that your home and body is in order, it's time to pivot to your business. Have your marketing materials ready across all of your social platforms. Your marketing materials should be simple, either a before or after picture of a scoop you did, or a cute or funny picture of a dog with your contact information. Be prepared to get all kinds of messages on your post, especially on Facebook. You'll find plenty of people reaching out being angry that they see poop on their social feed, or talking ill about dog owners needing to hire someone to assist on pooper removal. Don't worry about the negative comments, make it an opportunity to to kill them with kindness and explain that our services are just like other services people contract work for, like landscaping, cleaning services, etc. You should not be ashamed or afraid that you are offering this service, and if you defend your business in a professional manner, you may sway potential customers who are on the fence about hiring you to actually sign up. You'll also find many of your own clients defending your business and replying to those negative comments, and it feels good that when you take care of your clients, they will take care of you. Regardless, each comment is more engagement on your post, which will increase the visibility of that post. You should try to centralize the ways customers are funneled to you for services. If you have too many areas to check, you may feel overwhelmed and all over the place having to juggle the different leads being routed to you from all the social platforms. I'm not saying you shouldn't use Yelp, Instagram, or whatever other social platforms to grow your business. It's important that regardless of what platform you try to advertise your pet waste removal business on, that they all have the same funnel to get in contact with you. On Google, Facebook, and my website, whenever someone clicks to sign up for a quote, they are immediately routed to my intake form created by Jobber. I use this intake form as a way to pre-screen any potential customer, since I do require a little bit of time for the form to be filled out. This helps me filter out the customers who do not have a vested interest in hiring me for my scooping services. If someone can't take 5 minutes to fill out my form, I'm not going to waste 5 minutes of my time answering their questions when I have a plethora of other customers who are eagerly signing up. If you have frequently asked questions, consider creating canned responses on Facebook, a PDF document you can send to any potential clients, or set up a specific page on your website for this FAQ that you can point them to. Questions like, how are services conducted with your business? How to sign up for services? What can they expect when you scoop their yard? What are the payment methods? These are all really good to add to your FAQ since you can expect other customers will ask this from you. Once you have your marketing materials and your funnel set up, it's important that you create your business plan and goals. How many scoops do you expect to do during the day, whether it's during the weekdays after your day job or all day during the weekends. You must be realistic on how many appointments you can actually do in a given day. Don't schedule too many appointments in one day where you might have to reschedule or push them back. This will cause you to feel like you're falling behind and it may overwhelm you on top of the other responsibilities you have as a small business owner. Personally, I like to set at most two new winter cleanups each day during the week and maybe three during the weekends, but this will change depending on what other obligations you're responsible for outside of your 
your pet waste removal business as well as the customers you're currently scooping for. You truly do not know how long a winter cleanup can take. Sometimes it'll take an hour and a half and other times it'll take you four plus hours. Because of this, you'll want to focus on the customers who are closer to you, depending on how wide a range you set with your marketing campaigns. You should have a general idea of how big yards can potentially be in the towns around you and you'll want to prioritize the yards that can give you the most bang for your scooping buck if you have a lot of customers reaching out to you for services. This will allow you to maximize how many clients you can do in a general area as well as minimize how much gas you spend driving between appointments. For my business, I try to keep a service area around 10 to 15 miles. When you do spring cleanups, expect to take at least one hour at each appointment, not including driving, depending on the nature of their yard and how many wastes you have to scoop up. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I change how I price initial and winter cleanups and it's been one of the most positive changes I've implemented for my pet waste removal business. Don't be afraid to charge by bucket or bag. Since I started charging by the bag with my initial cleanings, I can say that I've been making significantly more money than last year's spring rush, averaging around 30 to 40% more per appointment. I might have been undercharging myself too much last year and I got burned many times by clients underestimating how much waste was in their yard and not having the courage to speak up for myself to raise the price I initially gave them. Consider this image. I had one yard earlier this year where I scooped out 18 total bags after around four and a half hours. The customer said it was three or four months worth of waste, but in reality it was closer to a whole year. How much would you have charged them for this service? Last year I probably would have said $200 to $250 and be really worried that I was charging too high. Because I charged by the bag for this job, their final invoice was $470 for those 18 bags. My body hurt, but my wallet was heavy. Using this method, you could charge between $30 to $50 for the first bag, and then tell customers you'll cut them a deal for $20 to $40 for each additional bag. You may need to play around with these prices depending on the size of your bucket and plastic bags, as well as the rates other pet waste removal businesses in your area are charging, but don't be afraid to charge what you think is right for your services. When you finish the appointment, line up all the bags in front of their yard, take a picture, and send it to them. That way, a customer will not be surprised when you tell them how many bags you've removed from their yard or try to fight you about their final invoice. Some people may have concerns that charging by the bag can be a detriment if you have to scoop really small poops or if you have to explore a really large yard. When you run into these scenarios, you should consider charging extra for the first bag because of the amount of time it takes for these kinds of appointments. At least with my own experience, I rarely had a yard where I didn't scoop at least two plus bags during their initial or winter cleaning. I've had a lot of success changing to this pricing structure, but do whichever prices you're happy with, whether it's a flat rate or charging by the amount of time. The cool thing about our industry is that we can all charge whatever we like and still find success. Don't be afraid to take a chance and adapt what's not working for your business. I added charging by the bag on my poop scooping calculator to show how much you can potentially make with this pricing structure. If you want access to my poop scooping calculator, check out poopscoopsfornoobs.com and sign up on the bottom of the page. Regardless of what price you set, do not offer any specials or deals. I do not recommend offering deals like a discounted winter cleanup rate if the customer signs up for weekly services. What ends up happening most of the time is that you'll finish the winter cleanup and by the time the following week comes for the weekly appointment, they end up canceling services or ghosting you. You're throwing money away if you start discounting your scooping services, especially when there will be people out there that just want the job done and won't care how much you charge them as long as you do a great job. Maybe later in the year when business slows down, you'll want to incorporate specials to entice new business, but when it's the busiest time of the year for this industry, make the opportunity yourself and charge what you're worth. It also comes down to the pre-screening that I mentioned earlier earlier in the video. It's okay if someone is trying to haggle you on price. Everyone wants something a little cheaper if they can get it, but this should be an indication to you that they may become a trouble client in the future. What happens if you have to reschedule an appointment because of the rain and snow? Do you think this customer might be the type that will complain and want a refund because you didn't go? This is your business and it's okay to fire a customer if they cause you more headaches than they're worth. Since this is your pet waste removal business, one of the biggest decisions you need to make is whether you should haul away the waste or leave it in your customer's dumpster. Be prepared prepare to haul hundreds of pounds worth of dog poop in the back of your car or in your truck bed, which adds significant wear and tear on your vehicle. I know this is a source of contention within our industry. Some businesses are starting to move away from hauling the waste or not taking any of the waste with them for spring cleanings, and others say taking the waste as part of the service we provide. Personally, I am in the pet waste removal business, so I haul the waste away with me. This is part of my service, and I can charge a little extra because of it. Do you haul the waste with you, or do you throw it away at their house? Leave a comment below with your thoughts as I'm very interested to hear if this is a trend that more pet waste removal businesses are considering. Is it too late to start a pet waste removal business? It's been over a year since I started poop scooping as a side hustle
hustle and I experience a lot of highs and a lot of lows. I'm going to break down the pros and cons of this line of work so you can decide if this hustle is right for you. Starting off with the cons, poop scooping is not a glamorous job. You're literally picking up poop, so expect it to be nasty, smelly, and everything in between. It takes a special kind of humble person to lower their ego and consider cleaning up after other people's messes. You'll also have strangers and maybe even your friends and family judge you because this kind of job may be beneath them. If you get easily squeamish to foul smells or disgusting yards, poop scooping may not be for you. Con number two, you are dealing with waste which can be hazardous. From viruses like parvovirus to parasites like Giardia, pet waste is no joke and you must protect yourself at all times. You'll be going through a lot of protective gloves and hand sanitizers. Make sure you also invest in some protective eyewear to prevent a lone fecal matter from accidentally hitting you in the eye or you running into a tree branch and poking your eyeball out. You'll think there's always some poop on your shoes and you'll constantly check if you're clean and sanitary. Con three you need to remember remember is that since you are dealing with hazardous waste, you will need to work with your local and state government and follow the proper procedure for waste disposal. Every city and state will have its own set of rules you must follow, so do your due diligence and don't mess around with these regulations. You may be worried about gas prices, and it's no secret that driving a lot is part of this job. When you first start out, it might not seem worth it to drive to a customer's house because of all the gas you'll be using. You should also keep in mind how long it'll take to travel to a client's house and adjust your quote to account for your gas usage. The next con when it comes to poop scooping is that you're expected to work outside in all kinds of weather, rain, snow, and the hot summer days. Sometimes you'll have a special case where you have to clean waste inside of someone's home or in the garage, but most of your work will be done in the elements. As you can imagine, the winter season tends to slow down your pet waste removal business because many of the poops will be hidden from the snow, but that didn't stop me from continuing service with my weekly clients. As long as it was safe for me to drive, I still try to show up and do as best of a job I can. Even if you only pick up one or two piles, that's less waste in their yard, and it's less that you'll have to pick up when everything eventually melts. You may not have known this, but poop scooping is very taxing on your body. After a few hours of repetitive scooping motions and squeezing the handles of your rake and dustpan, you'll experience muscle soreness that you didn't know was possible. Back aches, a tense neck and shoulders, and even difficulty squeezing your sore hands is something that will eventually happen to you. I'm still working through my own hand issues with trigger finger and hand fatigue, but the stretches I've been doing on a daily basis has helped a lot. Not everything is doom and gloom, so let's talk about the benefits of starting a pet waste removal business. According to the 2021 to 2022 National Pet Owner Survey conducted by the American Pet Products Association, there are 69 million households in the United States that own at least one dog. The Insurance Information Institute and other resources estimate there are around 900 million dogs in the world, which means that's a whole lot of poop someone is responsible for picking up. With so many dogs in the world, here are a few pros you should keep in mind. Starting off the pro side, the startup costs for a pet waste removal business are very low and there's not much overhead you need to worry about. With a couple of supplies you can grab at your local store, I spent around $65 buying everything I needed before my first scooping appointment. If you're trying to turn this hustle into a legitimate business, you will have additional costs like registering for business licenses within your town and state, along with business insurance to protect you from any liability. Depending on your marketing strategy, you may have to spend some money advertising on Facebook or Google, but when you do this right, you will quickly recoup whatever money you used and then you can invest it back into your business to grow it even more. Pro number two is that a pooper scooper business is easy to operate. You will need software that allows you to schedule your appointments with clients and a way to process payments. When I first started, I only used my Facebook business page to schedule my scoops and receive payments via Venmo and cash. This allowed me the flexibility to make my own hours and complete my scooping appointments after my day job or during the weekend when I wasn't taking care of my family. This is your business. You get to decide when and where you work and you can work as much or as little as you want. Pro number three is that you don't need a college degree or special training to become a professional pooper scooper. You aren't performing brain surgery or doing anything dangerous, except for the extreme circumstance of an aggressive dog going into the yard while you scoop. The skills you will acquire in this business will be from hands-on experience, but I'll share my thoughts on that later in this video. A pet waste removal business is a perfect business for owners of any age. Whether you're a college student looking for extra money on the weekends, or a single parent trying to support your family, or someone retired who doesn't want to rest on their laurels, a pooper scooper business is viable for all ages. Like I mentioned earlier though, this line of work is taxing on your body, so please balance your workload to prevent any long-term issues with your health. This is also the kind of business that you can branch out and offer more than just poop scooping. Services
services like pet sitting, dog walking, changing litter boxes for cat owners, or offering dog related toys or treats are ways you can grow your pet waste removal business outside of picking up dog poop. I also know other businesses that pivot to cleaning up leaves or shoveling snow during the fall and winter as a way to supplement their income during the less busier times of the year. One pro you probably haven't thought about is that you're helping the environment when you properly dispose of pet waste. The United States Environment Protection Agency has pet waste listed as a non-point source pollution, meaning it doesn't come from a single source. According to the EPA, NPS pollution is caused by rainfall or snowmelt moving over and through the ground, and as the runoff moves, it picks up and carries away natural pollutants, which eventually gets deposited into lakes, rivers, coastal waters, and groundwaters. By cleaning up someone's yard and preventing waste from entering the sewer system as runoff, you are minimizing the bacteria and germs spreading from the waste to a client's home, as well as doing your part in keeping our planet as healthy as possible. This is also a great marketing angle you can use to entice new business. I know you may be nervous, trust me, I was as well when I started. Being a small business owner and entrepreneur forces you to grow outside of your comfort zone. I'm naturally introverted, but since growing my business, I've learned to be more comfortable in my own skin and value my time and energy. Some of the skills you will learn through trial and error as a small business owner is better communication and time management, understanding how to be more empathetic when interacting with customers, and getting new technologies or systems set up so you can operate your business as efficiently as possible. You'll also learn how to market and advertise your services across social media platforms, and you'll gain the opportunity opportunity to network with other small business owners in your area to learn from. Even if you decide to stop poop scooping, these are all skills you can transfer to the next opportunity you want to jump into. Now I'm going to share the most important pro about having a pet waste removal business. If this has been helpful, make sure you skadoosh this video so it can spread to more people. It really does help out a lot. Thank you. The most important benefit of this business besides the money is all the different cute and friendly dogs you'll get to meet along the way. I've never owned a dog in my life. I'm more of a cat person. I love my cats, but I get excited when I meet one of my client's dogs and see how happy they get when someone new is around. Even though a dog may bark at you, it's just their way of saying hello and most of the time you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Almost always, you can see how much the owner loves their dogs and when you do a great job scooping, you're also making sure their dog is as healthy as they can be. You're increasing the quality of life for both the owner and their dog, and you should be proud that something as simple as poop scooping can have such a positive impact in someone's life. So is it too late to start a pooper scooper business? Only you can weigh these pros and cons and see if they align with your own goals in life. My pet waste removal business has grown to the point where I've paid off loans and credit cards that have held me down for years, and I get to provide a service that really helps out my customers. Has this ever happened to you? You're a loser. Stop <laughs> no. trying. You're not going to just give up already. No, you're not going to accomplish anything. Anxiety is the feeling of persistent worry, fear, and uneasiness about everyday situations. Do you find yourself randomly feeling restless and tense, and your heartbeat starts getting faster and faster? Or you're so worried about something that you feel tired and you sleep a lot, or not sleep if you're a fellow insomniac? Being a pooper scooper and small business owner can bring a lot of anxiety to your everyday life. When I first started out on this journey, I didn't tell anyone that I started a pet waste removal business fearing that I might get exposed as someone who didn't know what I was doing. This fear would cause endless negative thoughts of doubt that I was good enough to start my own business or risk having a friend or family member ask me six months from now how my business is doing and having that awkward conversation that I was no longer doing it. One of the best ideas you can implement to deal with that kind of fear and anxiety is having a support system and surrounding yourself with others who are helping you succeed. Whether that's a significant other or a friend that you really trust, learn to be comfortable with celebrating your successes and sharing your struggles with your support system. If you start talking about your business with someone and they immediately begin to undermine your feelings, or negatively talk about your potential to succeed, that is a major red flag and you do not want that person in your corner. Your support system should hold you accountable and give their honest feedback about your business with your best interests in mind. They should help you steer clear of anything that can negatively impact your business and celebrate the small wins you'll have as a business owner. I'm going to share a really impactful way you can celebrate your wins on your own, so make sure you watch till the end to learn more. You should also consider joining a community and learn from each other, whether that's a Facebook Facebook group, a business owner association in your state, or a YouTube channel. Surround yourself with other business owners who can relate to your struggles as an entrepreneur. Maybe you'll ask your significant other their opinion about your marketing material, but it's even better to get an opinion from someone who can give you feedback on which marketing material worked best for them and which ones didn't produce a positive result. If you fail once, you learn once and move forward, but if you surround yourself with a community that shares in their failures and successes, you will grow exponentially faster than doing it alone. 
Now it's your turn. What are you most anxious about with your business? Leave a comment below and share with your fellow scoopers. Another aspect that made me anxious were the hateful and negative comments people could potentially leave on my Facebook business page. It's crazy to see, but sometimes you really do get all kinds of haters and negativity whenever you start promoting your dog poop removal business on social media. You'll see comments about people who don't clean up after their dogs as lazy, horrible dog owners, or they can't believe anyone would be willing to pay someone to scoop up their dog waste and proudly proclaim that they scoop after themselves. These individuals who feel the need to spew negativity on social media and who are so passionate about how other people spend their money have no place being around your business. You should always be prepared to defend your services and explain that you are just like any other home service business, like landscapers and residential cleaners, and that you help bring value to your customers by giving them time back to focus on the things that really matter to them. When you professionally defend your business, it will only reinforce your current clients that they made the right choice in hiring you and you may sway any potential clients who are on the fence to reach out for a quote. If these individuals have nothing positive to say and only continue to badmouth your business and clients, do not be afraid to hide their comment or block them completely from your page. You can't please everybody and I'd rather focus my energy trying to land a new customer who appreciates my service than convince someone else who doesn't care and doesn't want to do business with me. Speaking of business, this line of work requires us to be around dogs at times, but something kind of crazy always made me anxious. My dog stepped on a bee. <laughs> no, not that, but something even more terrifying. It's perfectly normal to feel stressed about dogs accidentally being let out and barking at you aggressively or even biting you. Even worse, having the dog escape the yard because you accidentally left the gate open on your way out. Most of our clients love their animals deeply and you can only imagine the guilt everyone will feel if either you or the dog gets hurt. It's reasons like this why I specifically do not walk into a yard without a confirmation from my client that I'm safe to do so or if I know their dogs are friendly and I've met them before. Not only am I protecting myself from any potential liability, I'm minimizing the risk of getting a serious injury. You can also verbally tell yourself that the gate is closed on your way out or take a picture of the closed gate and send it to your client as confirmation that their dogs are safe inside. However, I have some yards where my anxiety is through the roof even though I've been told I'm safe to go into their yard because I know these dogs are super aggressive and they watch me menacingly from their windows. Everything my client should expect for their scooping appointment is outlined in my terms of service. This, but before I get to that, we need to talk about getting paid on time and how to handle customers who routinely pay late. When I first started, I only got paid for my scoops via Venmo or cash. I had many instances where I gave the customer their final total after the job was complete and I sat with dread and anxiety waiting for them to pay. But until I got paid, I just felt sick to my stomach that someone would take advantage of me and not pay for the services we agreed to. But even though this can happen to you, it's very unlikely and you have the recourse of taking them to collections and ruining their credit. However, you will find some clients who try to be sneaky and take advantage of you anyways. Story time. I had a client where I was supposed to scoop for one dog a week and after a few weeks I began to notice more waste in the yard. My client didn't mention there was a second dog. I felt so much dread about having an awkward conversation with this client if he chose to lie or deny a second dog that I actually did not say anything to him for two months. So each time I went to his yard, I just felt anxious and annoyed that this person was taking advantage advantage of me, but I didn't have the courage to stand up for myself. Until one day, I went to his yard earlier than scheduled and was happily greeted by two friendly dogs. At the end of my scoop, I immediately updated the visit to two dogs, sent the invoice, and waited. Even though I was dreading every second, I decided getting paid what I'm worth was more important than the anxiety I was feeling. He ended up paying the updated invoice and left a tip, so now I'm no longer annoyed and worried when I scoop their yard. Moral of the story, even though it can be hard having an awkward conversation with a client, especially around money. You are the business owner and you decide what your time and energy is worth. Don't let unnecessary stress about not getting paid enough weigh you down on top of the stress you'll have being a small business owner and entrepreneur. Once I implemented Jobber in my business processes and required deposits for all new clients and a card on file for weekly clients, getting paid the appropriate amount for my services and in a timely manner was one less thing I felt anxious about with my pet waste removal business.
business. Along with Jobber, creating a terms of service for my pooper scooper business lifted a huge burden off my shoulders. I explicitly outlined several terms, including when they will receive emails and texts from me, the requirement of their dogs being secured inside, when payment is expected in any potential grace period, and how I try my best to scoop what I can see, but I can't guarantee waste being picked up if the grass is long and unkept. My terms of service outlines exactly what my customers should expect when doing business with me. They are the set of rules I created that can protect my business from problems beyond my control. If a customer does not agree to my terms of service, I try to talk to them to better understand their concerns, but agreeing to my terms is a requirement in order to be serviced by me. There is no law that requires you to have a terms of service, but it's a best practice I recommend implementing to minimize the anxiety you feel with a pet waste removal business. Other best practices I recommend is focusing on self-care outside of business, whether that's reading books or listening to podcasts and music or going out in nature more. Whatever you enjoy that helps you recharge and get your mind off of work is something you should consider putting in your schedule so you don't risk getting burned out. One impactful way I try to reflect and celebrate my wins is the utilization of my gratitude book. I schedule time every morning and evening to write down five affirmations of what I'm grateful for in my life. I try to take at least five minutes to acknowledge the good things that I have going for me and my family. Being a business owner can be a lonely and stressful career, and sometimes it can fully consume you. Using a gratitude book will give you a moment to be present with your thoughts and recognize your wins and successes. It's hard to be vulnerable, but if you can't take five minutes to celebrate why you're an amazing person each day, then you might need to change some priorities in your life. If these feelings and anxieties start to interfere in your daily life, please take care and try to speak with a professional. Even though feeling anxiety is perfectly normal and often healthy emotion, having an anxiety disorder should not be something you try to deal with alone. I'm fortunate enough to say that I have a great relationship with my therapist who's helped me heal in so many ways. Because I implemented some of these strategies, I've had less anxiety and fear about being a professional pooper scooper and an entrepreneur. I feel confident when I talk to my customers because I know exactly what I offer and everything is outlined in a terms of service if there's any confusion with a client. Do you want to make more money with your pet waste removal business? As a professional pooper scooper, one of the best ways you can make more money with your business is by landing bid commercial clients. But you might be really concerned about not knowing how to bid correctly or if you'll be undercharging for your services. I'm going to break down everything you should know about commercial clients and give you the framework that will help you successfully bid on these kinds of jobs. What's considered a commercial property versus a residential property? To put it simply, a residential property is someone's home and a commercial property is a location used for business purposes. These could be considered homeowners associated associations or HOAs, apartment complexes, modular homes or trailer parks, dog parks, and businesses that allow pets and dogs on the property. Commercial clients like apartment complexes typically have their grounds crew or maintenance team manage the waste on the property, like scooping up the common areas and emptying out the pet waste stations. However, scooping dog waste is typically the lowest priority on the list with all the other responsibilities they have like maintaining the apartments and processing the work orders received from tenants. This is where you come in. You can provide a much needed value to commercial clients by taking on the job their grounds crew do not want to do, as well as keeping their property clean for all tenants and pets. The question is, how do you land these kinds of clients? Realistically, these kinds of clients will come to you. They will find your business online and will contact you directly. You'll want to have some sort of intake form to contact you, and your marketing strategy should include that you service commercial properties, apartment complexes, and HOAs. You want to use graphics on your marketing material and adding verbiage on your business profile that you service these kinds of properties. You can also join any apartment association in your state and sign up to be a verified vendor or partner for businesses in the rental industry. These types of memberships typically cost an annual fee, but you'll be added to a directory where property managers in your state can potentially find you and give you the opportunity to participate in networking events that can help you grow and connect with other business owners or property managers in your area. If you do this right, eventually you'll receive that faithful phone call. Even though you'll be feeling really excited and anxious getting your chance to land a big client, take a deep breath and remember to just be yourself. You are a professional pooper scooper after all, and your professionalism has gotten you this far. Before you can send your bid and provide the most accurate quote, you need to have some preliminary questions to understand what the scope of the job will be. Questions like, how many units are on the property? What is your budget? Do you need waste stations maintained or only the common area scooped? Can I use your dumpster to throw away the waste? How many dog parks do you have on the property? What is the total 
actual size of the property that's expected to be maintained. Don't be afraid to ask as many questions as you need to feel comfortable about doing a job you'll be excited to do. These are businesses after all, and the bottom line is equally as important to them as it is to you. Imagine how miserable you'll be if you undercharge yourself because you didn't ask the right questions, and now you have a big client that's not paying you the appropriate amount for the work you'll be doing. Of course, you can always have that hard conversation after the fact and start charging more, but setting the right expectations from the beginning will help both you and the client in the long run. The best way to understand how big the job will be is to actually go in person and walk the whole property. So let your client know that you'll be stopping by to check the property and try to see if you can meet them in person. This will give you another opportunity to build trust with them and personalize the customer experience. You should also ask for a map of their property to track in real time the highly concentrated areas along with the locations of the petway stations since this will determine how long the job will take. When you walk the property, be liberal with the grid pattern you typically do for your residential clients. Your objective for the initial initial walk is to identify realistically how long the property will take you to explore and scoop, what areas need to be taken care of, the locations of the pet waste stations, and if those waste stations are near a path or if you have to walk to them. If you are servicing pet waste stations, you'll need to determine how you plan on navigating between the stations. Since these stations are typically really spread apart or placed in the middle of a yard area, it takes time to walk all around the property and find these stations. Once you calculate how long your initial walk took, double the amount of time because the first couple of appointments will always take you a lot longer and politely let them know that you will follow up later that day once you crunch the numbers to provide the most accurate bid. Now it's time for the most important step, creating your bid and submitting a proposal to your commercial client. Most commercial clients will ask you to provide a bid or proposal that their board of directors or leadership team has to approve before hiring you since this will impact their business and bottom line. When creating a bid, remember that the more information you spoon feed them, the easier it is for them to digest that information, so try to break down the cost as much as possible. But before you can break down the cost, you need to figure how much you actually want to get paid. How long did it take you to complete the initial walk? And how much do you want to get paid per hour? Do you have to pay someone to help you? When it comes to commercial properties, it's in your best interest to bid according to the time spent on the job. Scooping common areas and dog parks will take longer because you have a larger area of grass you need to explore. Let's say that a property would take you three hours to walk each week and your hourly charge is $60. Your weekly price for that property would be $180. You then multiply your weekly price of $180 by 52 and and divide that number by 12. Your monthly price for that property would be $780. Since you asked for the number of units on the property, you can then break down this monthly price even more. Let's say this property had 350 units. You can then divide the monthly charge of $780 by the number of units, and this will be the cost of your services per unit on the property. This will cost the property $2.23 per unit to pay you $780 a month, and honestly, this is the most important thing that matters to them. Most likely, they'll add some sort of maintenance fee on their tenant's rent, and having the cost per unit will help help them decide how much the fee should be. If you plan on using the cost per unit on your next bid, hit the like on this video because it really does help out a lot. Thank you! When servicing pet waste stations, add a separate line item in your bid to break down this cost. Are they supplying the bags for the station or do you need to supply them? If you're supplying the bags, your breakdown should account for how much the replacement bags will cost for each station. Let's say you charge $15 per station, including replacing the bags, and this property has 7 stations. The weekly cost for having their stations maintained would be $105 or $450 dollars a month. It's helpful to provide the pricing for all included services because a property manager may want to use you for just one of the services and not the other. For example, I provided my apartment complex the prices to both scoop the common areas and maintain their waste stations. They decided to only hire me to scoop the property and to let their maintenance team handle the waste stations. Commercial clients and HOAs can be really cheap and the bottom line really dictates their decision making. Be realistic with your pricing and aim for $60 to $100 per hour depending on your area. Commercial clients or businesses just like yourself, and if you try to charge too much, the property manager will just consider hiring a new groundskeeper instead of contracting you for services. When you have this all figured out, type out your proposal and send it to your point of contact. The only thing left to do is wait and see if they accept. You're hired. Most commercial clients will provide you a list of paperwork they require before signing up, so make sure you have all of this taken care of so you don't scramble at the last minute like I did. First off, you'll be requested to provide your business or contractor's license from your state, which you technically should have if you are legally operating a pet waste removal business. They will also ask you for a signed W-9 form, which is used by businesses to gather taxpayer information that will be reported to the IRS. The form requires you to provide your name, address, tax classification, along with your taxpayer identification number, which is either your social security number or your employer identification number, or EIN, which you can apply for through the IRS. 
They will also request a copy of your policy for liability insurance to verify that you are covered in case of any accidents or damages that occur on the property or workers' compensation insurance that would cover any medical costs or lost wages due to work-related injuries or illnesses. Once you supply all the necessary paperwork required by your commercial client, it's time to send them your terms of service and request a deposit to finalize the agreement. You need to provide a terms of service to outline the exact parameters of the work you'll do and set the correct expectations. HOAs can be great, but don't let them take advantage of you by clearly defining what areas will be scooped and any changes to the scope of work will reflect on their invoice, but break down everything about your services so your customer can read and agree to, along with the items like the due dates for payments and how payments should be made, late fees if the invoice is not paid on time, any requirements of written notice for the contract to be terminated, and what situations would constitute a default under your agreement. Understand that most commercial clients will pay at a net 7, 15, or 30 day schedule, meaning you most likely won't see your money until a few few days or weeks of performing services for them. Commercial properties are very slow to pay, which is why I use Jobber to require a deposit and send my apartment complex my contract to sign and agree to. If you're not comfortable creating a terms of service from scratch, I recommend two options. You can look into online legal services like Rocket Lawyer, where they can help you create all kinds of legal documents like setting up your LLC, along with getting quick answers from real lawyers. You can also ask any legal question and have an on-call attorney review your documents too. I went through Rocket Lawyer to set up my contract for commercial clients and I feel better knowing I'm protecting my business legally. Maybe you're not ready to pay for legal services, so if you want to save time and stress for making a terms of service, the second option is I'm offering my contract for pet waste removal services as a template that you can use. This is the exact contract I made through Rocket Lawyer and you can customize the template with all the required information we discussed earlier in this video and use it for more than one client since it's a template that you can change to fit your needs. You can find my contract template on poopscoopsfornoobs.com and I'll leave links down below for these two options. Once everything's in order, it's time to get ready to service your client. Try to look presentable or wear your business work clothes when servicing the property to promote brand awareness. You are a business and how you represent yourself in public is an indication of how people will view your business. So have a positive demeanor and calm presence. Maintain your professionalism whenever you talk to someone and don't forget to smile. It's easier to smile knowing that you're getting paid hundreds of dollars from a single client. You're seeing it everywhere on the news. Worldwide recession. The inflation. The global recession. You might be really anxious about how a recession and inflation may impact your pet waste removal business and you're not really sure what can happen. I'm going to break down how this may affect your business and give you several tips I'm implementing to best prepare for the future. What do Airbnb, Square, and Uber all have in common? They all started during the height of the Great Recession more than a decade ago. Through times of economic hardships, the entrepreneurs who took risks and saw opportunity during those times positioned their businesses to take full advantage once the economy was in a better state. However, right Right now we're seeing rampant inflation in all sectors of the economy, like the prices of groceries, rent, and especially gas. All of these price hikes are lowering consumer spending power. With the cost of living rising for everyone, customers may have less disposable income available to pay for your services. I lost several clients in the last few months because they needed to cut back on spending and save money. You will find leads who may haggle you on the price for services. Even though it's important to stay mindful that most people will be strapped for cash during a recession, people who consider a service based on the lowest price as their first criteria criteria are the most difficult clients to please. As the old saying goes, you get what you paid for. I'm in the pooper scooper industry to make money and provide a service that's valuable to the people who can afford it. Even if the economy tanks, there are still people who will want this service because they'd rather get their time back and focus on the things that matter to them. The American Pet Products Association has reported that consumers as a whole are spending more money on the pet industry. Even though this continues to grow year over year, the large portion of these expenses came from pet food, supplies, and vet care, while only 9.5 billion out of the 123.6 billion spent in 2021 was for other services. I think it's possible to see the top three categories getting more expensive and dog owners will have less income to spend on other services. I consider my pet waste removal business as a luxury service, even though there's nothing glamorous about scooping dog waste. My service is something that is nice to have and not a necessity for most dog owners. Keeping this frame in mind helps me not take for granted the opportunities I created with my business and doesn't let my successes get to my head. During a recession, you may find other pooper scoopers that will go out of business because they didn't pay attention to their cash flow or became too lazy due to their successes and not adapting to the current market. Less competition means more opportunities for you to grow your client base. A study released by Bain and Company found that the gains and losses made during recessions tend to have a lasting impact. More than 70% of businesses who made money during the last recession kept those gains when the economy recovered, while the opposite is true. 30% of businesses who lost market share were unable to regain 
regain their positions. Why? Good times can cushion the hard truths of company performance, and tough times reveal true strengths and weaknesses. It can be a journey going through a recession and periods of inflation as a business owner. Similar to the journey you have hiking a new trail for the first time, it's going to get really bumpy, you're not sure which direction to go, and you might get lost. Uh, where am I? But if you continue to focus on the core areas your business is really good at, just like you focus on the path ahead of you, eventually you will find yourself on the other side and rewarded for your efforts. Make sure you hike the like button on this video because it really does help out a lot. Thank you. Here are my best tips you can implement to recession-proof your pooper scooper business. Focus on what you're good at. Identify the areas in your business that drives the most value right now. As a professional pooper scooper, you provide a service that people do not enjoy doing, and as long as the prices are fair and you do what you say, your customers will stay and be happy. Maybe you have additional services you've been implementing like dog walking, but you need to really concentrate on what you do best and how that satisfies the needs of your clients. Even though focusing on your strengths is important, try to also be adaptable. Change is inevitable so the ability to be flexible and pivot when necessary is the key to surviving the recession as a small business owner. One way I adapted my pet waste removal business was when I made the transition to charging by the bag instead of having a flat rate. I would always undercharge my services or underestimate how long the job would take, so pivoting to charging by the bag helped me increase my baseline income and protect my cash flow. This includes cutting down costs, any unnecessary spending to save money, and pay down your debts. Inflation is causing everything to be more expensive, so the best way to manage this is by increasing the rates of your services. It's like giving yourself a mini promotion. Price hikes impact everyone in business. It's the byproduct of an economy growing and everyone getting a bigger piece of the ever-expanding pie. It's a normal business practice to raise your prices, and as the cost of doing business increases, so should your prices. I have raised my weekly prices for some customers without much pushback or complaints, and as long as you do a quality job, most customers won't think twice about paying an extra dollar or two every Every single week. Companies that are burning money due to unnecessary overhead and expenses will struggle to keep their employees and technology working. Now is the time to break down all of your expenses and see where you could be saving money, whether that's buying supplies in bulk or making your routes more efficient to save on gas. I've always believed that you don't need debt when starting out a pet waste removal business. The only debt I would feel comfortable with is having a car loan to pay back if I decide to finance a truck because I'm really tired of carrying poop in my car. The Federal Reserve will continue to increase interest rates for the foreseeable future, so if you do decide to take out a loan for your business, just understand that it's going to be more expensive to borrow that money and pay it back in the long run. The more debt you have, the more cash you need to make your principal payments plus the interest. Cutting your budget doesn't mean you should stop investing in your business, it means spending your money on the areas that will have the most impact. Which is perfect for a third tip since you do not want to stop marketing. It may sound counterintuitive, but the businesses that continue to market during a recession come back stronger than those that don't. During stressful times like a recession, it's easy for your business to be forgotten about when every Everyone may be looking for an easy way to distract themselves. The more you keep your business in front of your target audience, the higher the likelihood they will be in a receptive mood to reach out for a quote. When business slowed down for me, I found this as a great opportunity to experiment with different kinds of marketing material, like before and after pictures, or cute dog pictures to see if I could generate any new leads. With gas prices impacting my bottom line, I want to focus my marketing efforts in the areas I currently service so I can increase the density of my routes. Facebook and Google ads allow me to target a specific address or town, and I'm hoping this will help me land new leads that are close to my current clients. Some of the clients I service live right next to each other, and I save a lot of time and gas keeping my routes as tight as possible. My next tip for you is to also invest in your existing customers. It's more expensive to get new clients compared to growing the clients you already have, and when a recession hits, it'll be even harder to get new clients when money is tight. Now is the time to really hone in on your customer experience and build relationships with your customers. Go above and beyond when you service their property, whether that's remembering their pet's names or asking your client about the family vacation they went on during the weekend. Treat your customers with respect and show them that you have their back, even during times of financial hardship. When you build relationships with your customers during difficult times in their life, this will help build lifelong customer loyalty. The more compassion and empathy I've shown to my customers who's struggling and not trying to take advantage of me, the more I've seen this benefit my business in the long run. I've landed more business through word of mouth and helping my clients in whatever way I can. When I take care of my customers, they take care of me. Even though you should focus on what you're good at, stay flexible and create upsell opportunities so you can maximize how much your current clients are spending with your business. Identify needs from dog owners and homeowners and come up with services that your business can offer along with your scooping services. These should maintain the quality you're known for and should not take away or impact the quality of your scoops. 
When you add multiple streams of income for your business, it'll increase the ticket price for the customers you do have, which means more money in your pocket. I plan on releasing an updated video with even more services you can implement with your pet waste removal business, so hit the subscribe to watch that video as soon as I release it. Making more money always sounds great, but you also need to review your work processes and either automate or delegate the parts of your business that's taking too much of your time. It's hard enough for you to strategically plan for the future, make business decisions, and put out emergency fires if you're busy sending out emails emails or if you're out on the field scooping. Prioritize delegating the tasks that take up most of your time to a family member or an employee that wants more responsibility. When business was slow, I implemented technology and processes to automate more of my tasks so once business was back to normal, I was better equipped to service my customers. I created canned responses to copy and paste verbiage that I always use, implemented Jobber to manage my scooping appointments and payments, and nice job to automate how someone can leave me reviews for my business. I made a terrible mistake. I made a huge tiny mistake. Many mistakes in fact. All that really affected my pet waste removal business when I first started out. This industry was brand new to me and I really had no context of how much I should charge for my scooping services. I tried doing research of companies in my area offering pet waste removal and decided to set my weekly rates at prices I was comfortable with. One mistake that held me back was the fact that I kept undercharging myself for one time in initial cleanups. I would ask how long it's been since the last cleaning and quickly found out that people really suck at estimating how much poop is actually in their yard. Since I gave them a flat rate when signing up, by the time I got to their yard and started scooping, I felt like it was too late for me to change the final price of the visit because I was too afraid of getting a negative review and didn't want to upset my customers. Your word is your bond in business, and if you agree to a specific set of terms, it's your obligation to keep your word as a business owner. However, this really began to affect my bottom line because I would spend hours scooping a really dirty yard and not make enough money to justify my time and energy. I overcame this mistake once I changed to charging by the bag for initial and one-time appointments and setting my base price to at least $35 to $45 for the first bag. I guaranteed myself enough money to justify scooping their yard in the first place, filtered out the customers who weren't willing to spend money on my services, and the more poop I scooped up, the more money I would make. Whether you want to charge by the bag, charge by the minute, or have a flat rate, you decide what your time is worth and don't undercharge for your services. The worst they can say is no, and you won't feel like someone is taking advantage of you. And I was taking advantage a lot when I started. There are things you just don't know until it's already happening to you. I didn't have a set of policies that my customers had to agree to before I scooped, and not having a terms of service written down was another mistake that really held me back. There were many times that a customer's yard was not maintained, and I had to explore a jungle to look for piles, or I'd have to wait up to 30 minutes because the gate was locked and the dogs were outside, and I couldn't safely service the property. Without having structure and a set of expectations my customers were required to follow, it affected my ability to provide consistent, quality service to everyone on my route. I I'd have to reschedule appointments because one yard is taking longer than expected and I wouldn't be able to finish my route on time. Think about the last time you ordered off a website and you expected the package to be delivered the next day and it arrived two weeks later, or when the plumber didn't show up to your house and you couldn't use the sink for a few more days. I bet that left a negative experience in your mind and you're less likely to recommend that company to one of your friends. These kinds of experiences really add up over time. My terms of service outlines exactly what my customers should expect with their scooping appointment, how I require payments to be made, the requirements requirements that the yard should be maintained and their dog secured safely inside, otherwise I wouldn't be able to properly service their yard. If there are any disagreements or complaints I need to deal with, I have the terms of service to lean back on since they must sign and agree to them before I do any work. The one mistake that really made me write up a terms of service was not paying attention to my surroundings and checking if it's safe to go inside the yard. One day, I forgot to text a client that I was on my way because the yard before took longer than anticipated and I was in a rush. Halfway into my scoops, their dog found out I was outside and no one locked the doggy door so he came out charging and had me trapped in a corner. I was hoping that someone would bring the dog inside, but after five minutes of getting barked and snarled at, I slowly backed myself out of the yard and got out safely. Fortunately, I did not get bit, but this is one of the risks you'll have in this line of work. I got very lucky, but there are other scoopers who have the physical and emotional scars from getting hurt on the job. Not paying attention and being safe is a costly mistake that will impact you. And if you are safe, accidents can happen and a dog could be let out because a customer doesn't know you're in the yard. You could end up in the hospital for stitches or an infection and even nerve damage. That doesn't include any follow-up treatments and therapy you might have to do for anxiety and PTSD or the legal fees you'll need to pay up front if you decide to take the client to court. Since that incident, I do things a little differently. I always make sure to communicate with my clients when I'm on my way and if I haven't met their dog or I don't feel safe in their yard, I require confirmation that the dogs are locked inside and I'm safe to service their property. I don't like scooping with head 
headphones on because I want to pay attention to everything around me, but you can keep one ear plugged in so you have more awareness of your surroundings and can react as fast as possible if anything happens. It'll also hold them liable since I have written confirmation that I can go inside the yard. Another mistake that held me back was not investing in technology once I had enough income through my business. For my first year as a professional pooper scooper, I managed all of my appointments through my Facebook business page and received payments via Venmo and cash. Even though this worked perfectly fine when I had around 20 weekly clients, I knew investing in systems to automate my workflows would let me scale my business and minimize doing the manual work that's taking too much of my time. After I finished my first year of scooping, I paid for Jobber which really helped kickstart my business in the beginning of the year. The intake form was invaluable during the spring rush season as any potential customer could submit a request to me while I was out on the field and I was able to quickly reply with a quote and request a deposit before I scooped them up. It also helped me once I started charging by the bag since it's only a line item I needed to change depending on how many bags they used. Jobber also gave me the ability to save their cards on file and charge them once the visit was complete. I also paid for a subscription to Nice Job to make one of the more awkward parts of the business easier for me to manage. I'm a huge introvert and asking someone to review my business was always very difficult for me. I always felt like I was begging even when I did a kick-ass job. Using Nice Job, I now have a system that helps me gather reviews without thinking about it. I went from 14 to currently 59 five-star reviews, which is quadruple from what I started with. On average, customers read 10 reviews before buying anything, and that's why it's more important than ever to grow your online reviews. So check out the links below if you're ready to level up your business. The biggest mistake I'm still having with my pet waste removal business is the fact that I rely mostly on paid ads to gather new leads. Using Facebook and Google ads is one option you have to bring awareness to your services, but I want to continue growing other funnels that can potentially bring more people. Since paid advertising is getting more expensive with time, I'm participating in events conducted through my apartment association so I can get in front of more commercial businesses and property managers. It was super fun building out my booth and I'm going to keep sharing my experiences about these events so make sure you hit the subscribe to watch those videos as soon as I release them. It also took me an entire year to get my business cards made. I still don't have any shirts with my logo and I don't even have decals on my car yet. Part of me is still not ready to bring that kind of awareness to my services. Imposter syndrome is real but I want to believe if I can overcome this then I can really start gaining even more customers. I also plan on promoting my loyalty program to my weekly clients and reward them with free services for customers I get through their referrals. Word of mouth is the cheapest and most effective way to gather new leads. I can spend the same amount of money on paid ads and not get a new sign up or I can offer such an amazing service that my customers can't help but tell their friends and family about me and those people will tell their circle of influence and the potential reach I can have grows exponentially. And what's the best way you can offer an amazing service? By clicking the video on screen now to learn exactly what to expect with your scooping appointments. And I'll see you on the next scoop. And as always, acknowledge the now. Bye!